Welcome to Buffalo After Dark, everybody. It's your Wednesday night uncensored, unfiltered, and unafraid sports show. You still up? This episode of Buffalo After Dark starts now. Welcome to Buffalo After Dark, everybody. It is June 1st. We're here on a Thursday because I had crap I had to do yesterday, but we're all here. So, of course, we got Luffy in the house, and then we've got Tiny Hands Bobby over here. How's it going? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm good, good in general. Good. Yeah. How are you? Hey, doing good. good. And apparently, you having Tiny Hands got at least uh, 32% of the vote combined <laughs> on, that, on that question about D Hop that we'll talk oh, about later. I knew. I knew. I knew my fucking. My poll option was good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So. I mean, I can imagine him being like, if there was ever a reboot of Jurassic Park, Adam would be the perfect Ian Malcolm because he would actually monologue about the chaos theory and chaos has been riven. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, Luffy, you got the shatter pen tonight or are you smoking hardcore weed tonight? <laughs> I got... Uh, or the naps. <laughs> I got a disc bullet pen tonight. I'm taking it easy tonight. I had a rough day at work. It was really fucking hot. So I'm yeah. trying to keep her PG. Yeah, it's like that up here. It's like 91 degrees out last I checked. So yeah. well, we go by we go by, you know, normal Celsius. Yeah. Celsius fucking shirt. Not fucking Fahrenheit, but right. Yeah. Tomorrow it's supposed to be 80 down here. Okay, so in layman's terms, for any Canadians watching this, in Celsius, that would be in the high, in the low to mid 30s. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I was guessing it was going to be in the 30s. Yeah, it was 33, 34 degrees here. Today. Damn. Yikes. But <laughs> no, good stuff, man. Well, of course, we're going to be here for the next hour. So if you want to jump on, 1992056099 gets you on the air. And of course, anyone that is watching, we do have the Facebook chat live and up and running. So of course, we'll read that as we go throughout the show. But first thing we want to talk about tonight, Stanley Cup. And uh, we're now to the finals. And who would have ever thought Dallas would have gotten their ass blown out <laughs> the way that they did? Uh, six nothing against Vegas to close it out. <laughs> and and the thing is, I, I remember watching that game. How do you not pull Ottinger when it's like three nothing before the end of the third, before the end of the first period? Well, you, you, it, it, he was their guy. You're not going to pull him after that. You, 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 you had faith in him that what that long. There's no way you're going to pull him. No, I, I, it just felt like Dallas was like so defeated. Like, after, and it's ironic about Dallas because, like, when Jamie Benn got suspended for doing that scummy cross check on Mark Stone mm-hmm. about a week ago, and the whole dilemma we talked about about cans and garbage being thrown out to the ice and the whole popcorn debris thing going on, ever since games, you know, four and five, the stars have been playing a lot better, and people were even speculating at some point about a possible reverse sweep. And mm-hmm. they said, okay, well, Jamie Benn is back. So it should be a, a good, you know, series when he comes back, hopefully. And Dallas had like shown like no mercy at all. And there was like no like life after game six. Was, and then Vegas was, just completely swept the floor. After after like the first period, you think, you know, you're you're down, you're out. It's only the first period, though. I didn't like how Dallas. I don't know. I don't know. They they just stood back and this. I get the first period, like there was a lot of like bounces and bags in favor, mm-hmm. but in the second period, you had just as many chances as as Vegas did. It wasn't like the the shots were like pretty much even. It was like twenty nine to twenty six. I think the final. Yeah, shot. Vegas wasn't really out shooting them at all. No, they were just getting the lucky bounces, and you know what? Some games that happens, but that's that's hockey, right? You, you can fucking play the best hockey for one game, and then the next game, uh, what well, shit hits the pan. But I feel like Dallas just 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 gave up after the first period. I think they were just so deflated. They just sat back and watched. It was cruise control. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and I'll say, I mean, Dallas's defense was absolute shit, you know, especially going into that, well, especially in that game, they just, like you were saying, they gave up. And I remember one of Ottinger's goals was like five hole. I'm like, I'm looking back at it. I'm like, that's a soft goal that he shouldn't normally not let in, but they really didn't have the defense there and Vegas was just pressing. They wanted it more. Yeah. Well, at the same time, I don't blame that game on Ottinger at all. I feel like Dallas has got a diamond in the rough with that guy and yeah, you, better it's good hold him. you better hold on to him because a lot of teams would die for a kid like that. Uh-huh. Uh, it's not, it's not the goaltending that lost that series. It's the fucking people in front of them that lost it. There was no one else to blame. Yeah. I didn't really like how Dallas presented themselves in game six. It's like the first period after the first goal, I said, okay, the Stars have plenty of chances to come back and, you know, even it up and whatever, because they were very on point and they proved it, that they were capable of making a comeback in games four and five. And then next thing you know, and it's just, like I said, they completely just derailed off the map after the first goal. And then Vegas just kept putting the dagger in their heart and they could just continue to bleed. And I'm not the biggest Jake Oniger fan by any means necessary. But he is way too inconsistent. Like, in one game, he played like Dominic Hoshik, and then the next, he looked like Michael Hutchinson. So there's no balance with him whatsoever because if you're going to call yourself a Stanley Cup contender for years to come, you need a stellar, balanced system in goaltending. And that's just, you know. But he's, but he's young, dude. Like, I can guarantee you, Devin Levi is going to have the same ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. Oh yeah, so I expect can, that. Yeah, but, pretty much uh, every goaltender will go through that. Ottinger, it's like he's going to have those couple of years where he's going to look absolutely atrocious, and then once he hits his prime, look the fuck out. That's the same with Levi. It's the same with any goalie. That's obviously the kid was thrown into a fucking wildfire by being the starter for Dallas for the playoffs. He's never seen any show playoff ever, mm-hmm. and you know what I mean. That's a lot. That's a lot for one guy that's never had any experience in the NHL in the playoffs that, that you know, be thrown at him. And for his, for his credit, like, look, look how far he got him. Like, you know what I mean? Like he, they weren't expecting any more from him than, you know, stop a puck here and there and hope for the best. Yeah. Literally had him one game away from going to the cup final. And, and when you look at like the stats all together, except for the two, like really two bad games that he had, taking that that shutout loss in game six and then there was one previous I mean he really had like below a two goals uh, against average for the for the stats so he really was playing well it's just in front of him is what caused the issue yeah I mean I look at Dallas and I say you know what Auditor could be a really stellar goalie and he's proven to be one of the best ones in the league but he needs a better supporting cast around him, especially on that defensive end. You can't just have a geriatric Ryan Suter just carrying the whole team on his back. I mean, yeah, you're a Miro Heiskin in, but that's not enough. The Stars don't have that balanced defensive core. Let's say, like, you know, Carolina, just, mm-hmm. just as an example. You know, Carolina has one to three, like, good pairing defensemen on three separate lines. Dallas only has Heiskin in. That's really about it. And then maybe Colin Miller, but he's a completely a ghost since like Buffalo or after the first year of Vegas, he just completely yeah. fell off the map. But my point is, is the stars, if they want to go back to the conference finals next year, or at least make some sort of adjustments to their team next year, they have to start looking into the blue line. Well, I'll at least say this. I'll at least say this. You're talking about Carolina's stellar defense. At least Dallas won two games. I think Carolina won a game. So. <laughs> yeah, Carolina got smoked 4 0. Yeah. Bring out the brooms, fellas. Bring out the brooms. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say, and if Dallas had any uh, chance at winning against Vegas, there's no way they were going to beat that Vegas team because they're just stacked. Yeah, I agree. Can I, Same thing with Florida. I have to bring this stat up because. Uh, it really grinds my gears that the, the Stanley Cup Finals is coming up. Can anybody tell me how many Canadian players are on both teams combined? 16. Keep going. Well, no, 16 and 16. That's about 32. There's Canadian. 32 Canadian players on both teams combined. Yeah, what's wrong with that? 
I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We should have the cup brought to Canada just for the fact that we all Canadian players are going to win the fucking cup. Well, yeah, they're true. True. But looking at going into this series now, of course, we're going to have Florida and Vegas. And, and of course, nobody ever thought Florida was going to make it out of the first round. But they've basically gone ahead and taken care of their business. Is of course, the Boston was the biggest upset probably anyone could have seen in a long time. But the fact that they've kept going through and Florida just seems like they're hitting it at the right time. They just seem to keep playing stronger and stronger. And of course, yeah, with they, what got they, the they got the yeah. refs help too. So, well, yeah, that always helps, also. But, but it seems like you know, if it was going to be a Vegas, if it was going to be a situation where Dallas would have made it out of that Cup final, all I can say is good luck because Vegas would have just totally smoked them probably in five games. But Vegas and Florida, you have more of an evenly matched series in this case, oh, and of course, you have Bob Rovsky. I don't know. I don't think it's evenly matched at all. I think it's totally one-sided, and I think it's going to be a sweep. And if, so you think it's going to be a sweep? I think Florida's going to sweep them. Really? Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I really think that – I don't think anybody in this whole playoffs can – no team. I mean, no. I don't think there's a team in the league, playoff-wise, that can compete with Florida sport check. Not one team. Not one. Maybe Vegas if they step up the plate in the I'm first game. Lucky. If Boston couldn't keep up with their forecheck, there's not a team in this fucking league that can keep up with that forecheck. That to Chuck line with his forechecking line. That is a sick line. Light, oh, lights yeah. out. Lights out. That, that line is the reason they are where they are because their forecheck is that good. Yeah. Yeah, and keep in mind Boston had like the best offensive production out of anybody this past season. Look at it, but look at it though. My the, there's science behind this because you can't if you have a good four check on a team, okay, in the season doesn't really mean shit because you're not playing that same team every fucking game. You're probably playing that team maybe twice a year, sometimes three, four times a year, but you don't have to deal with it every fucking game. But when you're in a playoff series, I've seen it happen in the in the in the least series. If you look at video from every series that the Florida Panthers played, they do the same fucking thing. Their speed on the four check is absolutely insane. And if if I, I, I can tell you now, if Boston couldn't keep up with it, if the Leafs couldn't keep up with it, I can guarantee you fuck and Carolina couldn't fucking even fathom to deal with it. You can tell like Every game and every series they've been in, with Boston not so much, but with the Leafs, one goal games, one goal games, one goal game. With Carolina, one goal game, one goal game. Just repeat, repeat, repeat. But what they do is they fucking wear you down. They wear you down. They fucking forecheck, 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 forecheck until you top up the puck, make a mistake. And they've been doing it the whole playoffs. And I can guarantee you, Vegas doesn't have. They they they've got a cakewalk compared to what fucking the Panthers had. A I cake- agree. I agree. It's a good way to put it. I mean, he does have a point because Vegas didn't really have a challenge ahead of them. Okay, maybe Edmonton, but let's be honest with us. Even even that wasn't that big of a challenge because their goaltending sucked. Edmonton, mediocre goaltending, uh, uh, one good line and and maybe one good defensive pairing. That's not a that's not a that's not a yeah. Challenge. They don't have like a fully built team. Which I mean, I agree with to that extent. But you're talking about Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl, two of the best players in the NHL. If, and matter. again, going to Adam point, Vegas didn't really have to worry about any about going through one like, line though. One what? line is all they had to worry about. When they played the Leafs, the uh, Panthers had to worry about three different lines that can score. Three different lines. Plus, they have two offensive defensemen that can score goals. Mm-hmm. With Boston, they had a juggernaut. Of yeah, they were stacked. <laughs> With Carolina, you had a fucking four stack lines. Like, mm-hmm. there's no comparison in my mind. The only way Vegas wins this series is the Panthers being beaten up and and you know tired from getting worked over game after game after game after game. But at the same time. If the Panthers gone this far, I they ain't gonna lose it. 
They ain't gonna no. lose. Like this, this I, I call it here now. I'll call if it's not a sweep, it'll be a four one. But I'm gonna call a sweep just because I feel like the Panthers are just too much for teams. There's too much. Their their team is too good. And if fucking if I'm one thing for certain is Brad Trey living, uh, you know the GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now. Yep, we'll get into that yeah, in the next segment. Yeah, for sure. One fucking regret he's making right now is that trade that he made. I guarantee fucking to you that. Oh, yeah, of course. And also letting Johnny Gaudreau go into free agency for nothing. I mean, yeah, I that mean, was the worst trade ever. That was, a, that was out of, really out of control, though. That's out of his control. Because if the player doesn't want to stay there and they want money you can't give, then you have to let them walk. Right. Yeah, I mean, he does have a point. But, but I can see where he's coming from as far as, like, the way that Florida has adjusted, especially with the four track, I completely agree with that 100%. And Vegas has had a cakewalk schedule, except from, like I mentioned, Edmonton, but the case has been debunked. But as far as uh, Florida, they've already gone through Boston. So if they can beat Boston, nobody's beating Florida by any means. Nobody. And guess what? Doesn't this team remind you of the 2012 LA Kings? It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the Kings, they were an eighth seed and they ran the table. They only, so they, only got, they only got in because somebody else lost. Right. <laughs> That's the only reason that LA yeah, got They would have been out otherwise. Yeah. Somebody else lost and they end up getting in. That's all that happened. And, and look, Cinderella story, right? Yeah. It, the, you, you, the best playoff team in my mind in, in, in 50 years was that LA Kings team. Mm-hmm. Right? But now you, you have a big topic of are the Florida Panthers in the same category? Because I think they are. I mean, they have to be because they were the yeah. worst statistical team going into the playoffs, even right. more. The LA Kings were the second worst at that time when they went to the Cup. Mm-hmm. Florida, as of right now, had the worst odds of any team in yeah. the playoffs. And they only yeah, got they, in by one point. <laughs> they were the eighth seed. They were the eighth seed to get in. They were the last team to be officially announced in the playoffs. I mean, yeah. I'm of course, but like Florida just kind of just took that day when Pittsburgh died and just ran away with it. And I don't know what changed or what was being said in the locker room by any means from the Florida Panthers, but something went off like that and they just became a completely different team. But I think as season like went, like as series has like progressed out through the playoffs, they've gotten better. And better and better and better. And they've gotten and they have perfected their craft to the point where if they play like this for the next series and from here on out, they're gonna be considered a juggernaut in the NHL with the way their system. I think yeah. I think I think personally this will be a one and done kind of season. I, I think they'll go back to being irrelevant next year. But I if they Dude, like if it goes to show that money doesn't buy you a cup, because no. I guarantee you that the Leafs, Boston, all the teams that were favorites, mm-hmm. uh, obviously I knew the Leafs weren't going to win a cup, and I I honestly didn't think we were going to get it at the first round, which we actually did for the first time since 2004. So I was kind of pumped about that, but yeah. it was really, really deflating because. Every game that when we went down two nothing against the Panthers, it was like, "Fuck me, we could have had it, could have had it, could have had it." You know what I mean? Every every game was a fucking one goal fucking affair, and it's not that Toronto played bad because they didn't. Same with Boston, they didn't play bad. They just got out playoff hockey. That's what I call yeah. it. You got out playoffs. You got fucking you got beat to the puck too many times. You got four checked out and you lost, and that's. That what it boils down to. And that's how Florida yeah. won. Yeah. Their forecheck has won them series. They won also, every series by their forecheck. It's, also, not by, it's not by the amount of goals that they've won. If you look at the fucking scores of every game that they've had, that it's been no blowouts, all one game, one goal game, uh, overtime, fucking last minute goals. Like that's how they won. They, they didn't win by their offense. They won by their fucking playoff. Uh, their defense and they've won by their forecheck and their goal. That's how they've won. 
Yeah, very true. And unlike Florida, I mean, Vegas basically bought their team for who they have right now, because when you look at Barbashev, you have uh, Jack Eichel, obviously, in the trade, Kessel, Carlson, Marcia So, you have Mark Stone, of course, you've got um, Haig, McNabb, I, I mean, every, like, literally, Shea Theodore, even, Petrangelo, I mean, they literally bought their team, whereas Florida, they've kind of come up um, from their system, and they've added as needed, so, I mean, I am, I'm almost thinking if I'm going to put a prediction on this series, I'm thinking 4-2 Florida is going to take it. I just think Eichel and company collapse in the series. And that floor check, that is going to be their undoing, it's as you mentioned. Fucking, yeah. Yeah. It's nasty. It's fucking nasty. It's a nasty floor check. Yeah. And it's, and it's they, super effective. Yeah. They, they, they get, and somehow, somehow, I've never seen it in my life. It never, it like I've I seen four checks, you know, you go down, you four check the puck, you fucking hope you get, get make them to cough the puck up. I've never seen a team that fucking does it so well. That one line, they do it so well, and they're so on, they're on you before you get a chance to even turn to get the puck. They're on top of you. Like yeah. I don't think Vegas has that. Vegas doesn't have the speed. I mean, I, I mean, like the Leafs have like if you look at the stats. For like puck, like exit of the zone, the Leafs have like the best in the league for getting the puck out of the zone to the blue line. Yeah, and even they got outworked. They could, and they got fucking schooled. They got fucking schooled. Mm-hmm. I will say this though: the Florida Panthers, compared to Vegas, Florida has nothing to lose at all. Exactly. They have, they have nothing, nothing to, to lose. lose. They've already proven their fucking point. If they lose at this point, then oh, oh well. We've already proven it, made our mark, but yeah. I'm giving to you to to Chuck and fucking and company, yeah. and uh, what's his name? Uh, it came from Tampa. That place. Oh, um, that's on Florida or Vegas. On on Florida. Uh, he came from Tampa. He plays. Oh, uh, part of Hagee. Yes, I can guarantee it. Those two are going to give them so much trouble. It's going to be fucking unreal. I can guarantee it. You might be right on that, honestly, but. We'll see. But as far as I know, again, the Panthers have absolutely nothing to lose. And even if they somehow lose this series, they have nothing to be ashamed of. They had a miraculous playoff run. They had nothing to be ashamed of at all. Yeah, all of a good run. That was a that was a hell of a run. But I will say this too. One last thing: Vegas has all the pressure around on them right now to mm-hmm. win the Stanley Cup. They have all the star talent. They're in a big market. And the pressure is now mounting on Vegas to win the Stanley Cup. And if they don't win the Cup, what's going to oh, be Oh, just wait to see what happens there. I it's going to be I the narrative of the, the Vegas cup. Golden Knights. I hope when they don't win the Cup, Gary Batman resigns and fucks off somewhere. <laughs> oh, God. I hear you. But um, you, blow to, you yeah. know, nobody else wants that more than fucking Gary Batman and his fucking oh, baby. Of course. Of course. Because he didn't get his way with Arizona for 25 years. So, so that's a totally different story. But, but uh, we'll go on to our next topic. And uh, we definitely had some movement on the, on uh, the executive ranks um, over the past week. And uh, one of the big surprises that came out, well, Kyle Dubas was originally thought he was going to be the GM of the Pittsburgh Penguins. He's actually the president of hockey operations for the Pittsburgh Penguins now. And then, of course, Brad Sure Living ended up making a move as well. Yeah. Well, you know what? I have nothing but respect for Dubas. I think in the time that he's with the Leafs, he did great things. Well, the things that Shanahan allowed him to do. Uh, but you know what? They'll, they'll, I think Pittsburgh getting a good – I didn't think he's going to be a fucking – <laughs> VP of hockey uh, operations, but uh, yeah, uh, you know what? Fuck me, like let let him go with it and see where it goes. Like uh, you know, I wish him all the best. He he did what he's supposed to do with the Leafs, so mm-hmm. he tried his best. Yeah, got Keith in there. He got some good players in there, and he was able to make it work. And and I can already guarantee you, it's like with Pittsburgh, he's gonna be an immediate upgrade over Hextall. So. Well, actually, almost anybody's going to be an upgrade for that organization over Hextall. So. You know, that's funny. I've already heard the name Matthew Darsh. He's the assistant GM for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's the assistant GM for the Tampa Bay Lightning. He's being brought up as the front runner for the general manager job, and he was specifically picked over Eddie by Kyle Dubas. But I don't know how accurate that's going to be, but 
if Darsh gets the job to be the GM at Pittsburgh, you know, I'm all for it. You know, hopefully he does good things, but we'll see what Dubas picks. But Pittsburgh, I don't know, though, if, like, if they'll be anywhere near the same without Crosby or Malkin when they retire, and even or if Dubas is there or not. I really don't know. Yeah, they got to they gotta start thinking about that now, obviously, and especially with, with them, too. I mean, they're, get, they're getting closer to when they're going to hang it up. So, I mean, just they got to make sure that they have their system stacked, and they've got to make sure that they get the right players in place now. And I think coaching-wise, they're fine. I'm not too worried about that, but – Hextall was not the man. No. I think, well, I, I, well, I seen the press conference for Trey, uh, Trey Living and his, his opening press conference or whatever. And they basically, you know, trying to meet your fucking animals. <laughs> so the first thing they asked is like, well, what's your number one priority as GM? And he's just like, you know, I just got here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, give the guy a chance to do his job. <laughs> like let me let me settle in here. I just got here yesterday. Yeah, literally, but, it's like let him settle in, let him figure out the roster, let him let him eat, let him take a shit or whatever, and then let him get it get down to business. But, but he yeah. did bring up like you know two two things that he wants to do, and he the one the number he he said number plan one with plan one A and then plan one B is uh, the Matthews contract is his number one priority, uh, and then his second priority was the coaching situation. So I don't know if that means they want to work it with Keith or they're looking to move on from Keith, but either way, uh, obviously another thing that needs to be addressed is the core four issue. Uh, he didn't want to speak on that. Every time they asked him, he pretty much dodged the question. Uh but what from what I seen from one of the like top notch reporters from the Toronto media was he thinks that that whole the whole Carolina uh, debacle talking about trading Marner to fucking Carolina for uh, PC and fucking whatever, whoever else it was in the first that 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 is a pipe dream that was never actually a cemented thing in stone that was just a rumor that came out of rally saying that uh, they would have looked at Mitch Marner if he was available. Never, never did the Maple Leafs organization offer him up for trade or uh, any of that shit. So is it? I'd, I'd just like to make it clear that that whole fucking debacle about talking about Carolina and Mitch Marner thing, that's an absolute pile of shit that's not existent. I don't think they were ever going to be able to afford him to begin with. No, but- they can't do. You think what they, that offer was enough for Mark? Not, a fucking Not even chance. close. <laughs> no, and if, even if they were to trade him to Carolina by like this rumor supposedly, like for like Natchez and a first and other assets and prospects, Carolina would have to pay him regardless because he's a UFA next year. Mm-hmm. So if Marner were to be traded, you know, just saying this into oblivion, if he were to be traded – he would want a good demand of money from the Hurricanes if he were to be traded, which I don't think he will. I think Marner's going to be staying in in Toronto. Really? At least until this Nylander's summer. going to go. I can guarantee you now. I I from what, who I follow and they're like Leafs insiders and stuff. Mm-hmm. My my feeling is that Nylander's going to be the odd one out because right. they can't they can't afford all four. And right. they still have Tavares under fucking contract. You can't get rid of him. You, he has a no trade clause. Yeah. Uh, Matthews. Uh, has, <laughs> Matthews ain't going nowhere. That's Nylander has one on July 1st. Nylander has a selection of teams that he can pick to. So he's the only player in that whole scenario that's disposable without yeah. like any kind of issue. Like he can pick a team. I think he has eight teams on his no trade uh, list or whatever, but he can select a certain amount of teams that he can go to. Yeah, I heard one of them was Colorado. Well, yeah, and I also heard, oh fuck, I heard Columbus. I heard uh, uh, who else was it? Uh, oh, Colorado. I just said. No, no, one, but there's three or four teams. That, oh, no, no, what I was, oh, teams that he wouldn't go to, is I was adding teams that he would want to go to, is what no, I'm saying. But there's teams that he, he 
they want him to go to that's on his no trade list. And there's a whole bunch of fucking shit behind it. Like, it's not going to happen overnight. If everyone thinks that, like, oh, the, oh they're going to blow up the core forward. Like, you think that's going to happen overnight? No, it's not going to fucking happen overnight. So, right. And most of these players are still on their fucking contracts. All these fucking people out there that are like, oh, yeah, you're going to trade Matthews. You're going to fucking do this. You're going to do that. Like, I, I hate people that think they know how the ins and outs of hockey when they have no fucking idea. They, yeah. They're those fans that they, they think that, you know, if I say something stupid, that's probably going to change things. No, you're still going to be stupid in the morning and nothing changes. There you go. <laughs> what we'll do is uh, we'll move on to the next thing here in a moment, but we do have a couple comments in the chat. So uh, first and foremost, Dan Gard, I think that's the first time we've seen him in the chat. He says, hi. Um, also, uh, Hatch is in the house as well. He says, what's up, my people? Go Buffalo Sports. And he says, what, is the chan- what are the chances that Buffalo picks up a top five defenseman this offseason? Uh, I would say 90% because they desperately need it. But I think if I had to pick one who would be available in like the free agent market, I don't know if he's a UFA, Adam or Tom, but if you guys know, then correct me. I would say Matthew Dumba is one of them for sure. I would certainly say. Uh, another one I would possibly, I would almost possibly would be a consideration, at least in my book, would be Carson Soucy from Seattle. I would not mind that at all. One bit. I'll give you, I'll give you Justin Hull. I'll give you Justin Hall. Maybe, but Scott Mayfield <laughs> wouldn't be a bad idea, considering I watched him firsthand for a good handful of years on the island. So I know a thing or two about Scott Mayfield. So that's uh, that would be a light dream if Scott Mayfield were to go to the Sabres. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see where it goes from there, because there's really no guarantee what's going to happen in free agency or, or in trades. I think this is going to be a year where we're going to see more trades in – the summer, then we will see free agent signs because a lot of the guys, if you look at the 2023 free agent uh, roster or the class, a lot of the guys are in their either in their late 20s or early 30s, and they're probably either guys that are on the peak of like on the verge of possibly getting past their prime, or that's just honoring themselves a new contract. Or well, you also have to consider buyouts, you have to consider trades and stuff like that. So there's a lot of mishmash going on in free agency, so we really don't know. Good point. Good point. I'll give you. Okay, wait, wait. I'll give you Justin yeah. Hall for a bag of Lay's potato chips. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, also this week we did see some some coaching changes here in the NHL, and of course, um, Luffy, you know of one of them uh, right off the bat, and uh, we'll go there. Uh, Washington Capitals have found their man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's a man or not. Bill Carberry. <laughs> We'll, we'll say, it, you know what, you know, good, good on them because who else did they have to pick from, I guess. I, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have went that route. I would have went with something else, a little, little bit more veteran or or whatever because your team's already, like, you know, ancient. So mm-hmm. might as well pick an ancient coach and go along with it. But I don't know. I, I don't think it's a bad choice, but the, the guy, you, you know what, hit or miss, right? <laughs> I mean, that's basically what he is. He's a hit and miss. I mean, Spencer Carberry could very well be a good coach for all we freaking know. The Caps might be a wild card team next year, depending on the system. But I don't know. I feel like Toronto's going to miss him badly next year when the police, you know, with their, I don't know if he ran their power play. I don't know if they ran their penalty he, kill. I don't he, know. Ran, he ran their penalty kill. Okay. He, so he, he, he was all right. He, but if, a lot of games, a lot of times him and Keith would have like heated arguments on the bench because Keith likes to swap lines a lot. This right. guy doesn't like swapping lines on the fly. Keith loves swapping lines on the fly. So they all I thought he was going I thought he was gonna get moved halfway through the season because they did they were having a lot of issues between him and the assistant coaches and stuff. So, so maybe Keith probably thought, well, I'm glad he's gone. So now I don't have to hear him bitch for the next few years. No, I don't know Keith's job is safe at this point. So we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. see where it goes. Well, I don't know about that because there was a lot of movement in Nashville recently. So I don't know. I would take that with a grain of salt. I mean, nobody thought Gerard Gallant was going to get fired two years after signing with the Rangers. And then right. you know, that happens. And then – and then a lot of people weren't necessarily thinking Lavi Lett was going to be gone either, but that happened too. Yeah, or I'm just saying, 
like if Trey Living has a certain person in mind, he has that, that power, right? To that he's been given the power by Shanahan as the GM to pick his staff as he pleases, right? So I don't know if he fits in his kind of idea of what he way he does things. So I I don't know. Maybe he'll be safe. Maybe Trey Living is going to keep him and then get his own coaching staff around him or what? I, I, I don't know. Like it, It's all up in the air. It's too new to know what's going to happen because mm-hmm. I don't know what he's I, – I, I really don't know what the guy's about, to be honest. Right. We're going to find out in a few weeks. I mean, yeah. I've also yeah. heard – sorry, Tom, but uh, I've also heard a rumor that Troy Living is not going to be able to be on the draft floor for the Leafs. I'm no. not sure why. He can't. He's not allowed. What do you mean he's not allowed? He's a general he manager. Shanahan, dude. It's Shanahan. Shanahan likes to have too much power. He has too much power, and he doesn't let his GM do his job. That's why Dubas is not where he is now, because mm-hmm. Dubas, the reason him he said to the media that Dubas and him parted ways was because of a $1 million contract difference, which is bullshit. It's because Dubas... One, he, he asked for more fucking power. He asked for more decision-making, and he asked for the Shanahan do let, let him do his job. And Shanahan said, no, we're not changing anything, and basically that was it. Doesn't yeah. surprise me about Shanahan. <laughs> oh, dude, he's power-hungry. Like, he, he yeah. wants control of everything. He, yeah. he might have a GM, but I can guarantee he's going to run a trailer thing like he did do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and actually Hatch had a couple other comments too. He said, um, basically, look at the coach in Boston. A good coach led them to the playoffs, and then they fired him. So, of course, he ends up going to a new team and winds up with the, going for a Stanley Cup final this year. So he's referring to Bruce Cassidy on that one. And then he also says, what would you do with, with Greenway? Have him stay in Buffalo or get rid of him? My answer, keep him here. You need that physicality on the defense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd, 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 vote, I'd vote to keep Greenway because you, you want that grit. And yep. when, you, when you eventually get to the playoffs, you want to go like that. I guarantee you that. Yep, for sure. And then uh, real quick before we move on to the next topic here, um, Burnett, <laughs> the new coach of the Nashville Predators. You know what? That that hire would just came out of left field. I genuinely thought that he was – because I spoke to Rob about who's a, He's our co-host and he's a Devils fan. I, gen- I spoke to him about this, and I said, Rob, I didn't think that – the Devils were going to let Burnett go that easily. And then, sure enough, he comes out of left field with a bat. Bang! There goes Burnett, and he's now the head coach of Nashville. That, Good hire. Me, that was a huge hire by Nashville, and that was the first big move from Barry Trotz. So, uh, how do I think they have to pay this guy to leave New Jersey to go to fucking shitville? Well, I mean, Barry Trotz coached the guy, so it makes a lot of right. sense. Because yeah. he's an original predator, so it makes a lot of sense to why Andrew Burnett, you know, was nominated. And he's a good coach wherever he's been. He was in Florida. He did great. He was amazing in New Jersey. So I think Burnett has the potential to be a great NHL coach. I it just it just comes down to the players. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. But like at the same time, if I'm him, I'm like, fuck. Do I stay with a team that's probably going to cop within the next five years? Or do I go to a team that's not going to be rolled for the next 10? Well, I mean, it, it, you pick and choose your battles, but I personally think Burnett will thrive in Nashville. But the only reason why I think that Nashville got rid of John Hines so quickly is because the dude is uttered ass and he doesn't change his system at all. He did this in Jersey. Oh, so yeah. that's what he doesn't adjust. Oh, and it's so pathetic that I already read a rumor that Chris Drury, the GM of the New York Rangers, is already considering him as the favorite for the job once he gets the interview. Well, that'll lead to Chris Drury being axed. (laughs) Yeah, John Hines sucks. And people in New York, and I have a lot of friends who are Ranger fans, and they all said to me, do not fucking bring John Hines here. That dude is ass. We see what he did with the Devils. There's no chance in hell I would want that guy. Because at one point, it was Peter Laviolette's job to lose. Now, all of a sudden, it's John Hines. What the hell is going on down there? That's a ma- on massive a downgrade. <laughs> it's a massive downgrade. It's a massive downgrade. Is absolute right. And the Rangers are going to suck ass 
and it's going to be a team where John Hines comes in, and he's going to be another Jim Montgomery. He's on a good mm-hmm. team, and Dink's always a great coach. And then Igor Shostorkin just kind of just carries the Rangers into the playoffs. He's right. done this now for a good handful of years. Even in 2022, when Igor and the Rangers were in the ECF against Tampa, and then this past year, losing in seven to the Devils in the first round. The point is the Rangers are getting desperate because they know their time is running out. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, of course, hearing what happened with Patrick Kane with that hip surgery, that's even more of reason that they're worried at this point. But we'll, well talk about that even further. There's a reason the Leafs didn't take him. Right. And a good thing that they didn't. So, so, but, um, yeah, but we'll do, we're down to our last 20 minutes. So we're just going to kind of fly through some last stuff here. But uh, one of the big things that came out and Bobby, you had mentioned this Philadelphia Flyers made a slight change to their Jersey and they're going to a different shade of orange. Yeah. Let's go back to the 1970s. The Flyers supposedly, let me get my camera so I can show you all this real quick. And then I'm going to go back to my wallpaper I don't know if Fitz has seen this either, but I'm going to show you real tad quick. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bit, there's a huge difference in shading in orange yep. on the logo. Like there's, it's genuinely the same. I mean, that's not even a question. But if you didn't tell me, if you didn't show me this, I'd never want to know the fucking difference. Well, that's why I'm pointing this out because the one on the right is yeah, the current logo, and the one on the left is the new one. So the Flyers are genuinely just taking what they have from the 1970s and making it into a new jersey. And their sist- and the jersey design they're going with is going to be the one the Devils currently have, which is kind of like no line on the bottom. And they're going to take the, the shoulder or the stripe from the 70s and make it into a patch of a mixture of the 70s and 90s Flyers jersey. It's going to be horrendous. And I can guarantee you that for sure. And they'll say, they're advertising it on their Facebook wall. If you just go up there and it says a new era of orange. I'm like, what era? If we knew that there was going to be a post or a graph about it, are you trolling us? Are you selling us something that we don't know yet? Because if you're telling everybody that you're going to be getting a new logo, you have to genuinely change the entire thing, not the fucking color. There's a big difference. Right. This is why Philly is irrelevant. I hope and I'm hoping trainers watching this and be like, nobody cares what Philly does, <laughs> right? Mm. Nobody cares about their mascot either. Gritty. Oh God. Well, They're like, well, congratulations. Go eat a box of crayons. Well, I'm gonna be touching grass with him in November when he comes with me to the Eagles game. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Yeah, and actually, trainer's not even in the chat tonight, so. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. But- it's He's probably still crying about how much the Flyers suck. <laughs> yeah, seriously. But in but, general, the Flyers are just wasting their time. Yeah, they are. They are. But that being said, let's flip it into football because there's been some news that's come out. And uh, one of the big things that happened is uh, DeAndre Hopkins um, ended up uh, – basically saying bye-bye and uh, basically the bills, the chiefs, and now the Patriots are considered front runners for his services. Fuck Hopkins go for cook. Yeah. I agree with Adam at this point because a week ago, Deandre Hopkins made a statement by saying, Oh, I want to win a ring. I want to win a super bowl. And mm-hmm. I don't care about the money. Cause he's already making 22 fucking million or 36 million. Oh yeah by next year it's like who cares you have the money then people are now saying that teams are starting to push themselves away from hopkins because he's a demanding too much money and b he's making it more difficult than it has to be it's odell beckham jr 2.0 it's getting so redundantly old that just if you're going to just brag about winning a super bowl shut the fuck up take a team friendly cap salary and go win a ring. Forget the money. You're already making twenty-two to thirty-six million dollars next year because of Arizona's incompetence. So he's out of the picture. And then you have teams like the Bills, the the Chiefs, the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Jets, uh, the Patriots. All those teams were all mentioned to be in on DeAndre Hopkins. And I guarantee you, somebody even said at one point that he's considering doing a reunion with the Houston fucking Texans. Why yeah, the hell would he want to do that? 
That's yeah. not going to happen. There's no fucking way this happening. Well, apparently the Texans have the cap, which makes sense. But also, it's been reported that Hopkins is infatuated with C.J. Stroud. <laughs> well, you know what? The same th- same time, that's like saying the Panthers vote and grab them because we have a bunch of money. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're second in cap space in the fucking league. You think we're going to waste fucking $15 million on a fucking washed up fucking wide receiver? Uh, of course not. Well, I mean, to be fair, you kind of did. <laughs> yeah, could. we didn't pay fucking 25 fucking million for him. That's true, but how much did you spend on Adam Thielen? 25 mil? 25, but, you know, it's kind of a... I don't know. We got lots of money to burn, I guess. Yeah. I would could, be worse. could be the Ravens, how they spent all that money on Odell Beckham Jr. with, like, two blown ACLs on him. Dude, fuck the Ravens. That team is so desperate for, for irrelevance at this point because you had to pay for Lamar, you have to pay for OBJ, and now you're apparently the front runner somehow. One day it's Cleveland, one <laughs> yeah. day it's Buffalo, one hey, day it's Kansas what? City, one you day can, it's Baltimore, one day not, it's Dallas. You can get all you want, but when the Panthers go 11-5 this year, they will be talking different. I mean, if they get D-Hop, that would make them even better. No, I don't want D-Hop. We don't need them. Oh, Okay. So you can throw that. Tiny Hangs, like, Young, Tiny Hangs Young is going to fucking throw us to the promised land. <laughs> there we go. Oh, man. But although there could be a lot worse problems, though, because uh, right now the Las Vegas Raiders are in a little bit of a shitstorm because Jimmy G failed his physical. And, uh, oh, God. And now his contract's all beyond screwed up. I could have sworn two weeks ago I seen Jimmy G in a press conference and he was like, I'm in the best shape of my life. I've never been, I've never been healthier yeah. and more in shape of my life. Okay. Yeah, and his left Jimmy. foot. <laughs> Jimmy, what happened to your foot, bud? Uh, what to your foot? Yes. Yeah. And so, he he ended up, so he ended up losing all his guaranteed money, and now they had to rework his contract, and Lord knows what's going to happen with him at this point. But then yeah. got Tom Brady is supposedly a minority owner on the team now. Well, I mean – Put it this way, there was even a rumor that says the Raiders could move on from Jimmy G at no cost if he does not pass a physical by the time the season starts. I think he will. I think he will pass a physical eventually. I, I think that his left foot was bothering him or whatever, whatever the fuck happened, but he he's not like the worst shaped guy I've ever seen in my life. That's by any standard. So and you can oh, look at some of the fucking lumps that play in the NFL. So Oh, yeah. Everyone remember Gilbert Brown when he supposedly only weighed like three something, but he was probably like closer to 500 pounds when he was playing with the Packers. Oh, God. Remember Jamarcus Russell when he was in the NFL of how how heavy he was when he was playing? Yeah. Didn't he like get close to like 300 pounds or something for a QB? I think so. I mean, yeah, granted, he was one of the biggest busts of all time, but I remember when Jamarcus Russell was drafted, he was, I think he was listed at 235 when he was drafted. And then months later, after he got drafted, he had this arrogance that said, I'm the first overall pick. I could do whatever the hell I want. And then I think he kept spending his money on like McDonald's and like unhealthy foods for an athlete. And then he came into really, really bad shape in with like training camp with the Raiders that year. And then he was awful afterwards. It's like, why do that to yourself? And then there was even a talk at one point about the Redskins bringing him in a decade ago for a tryout that never came to fruition. So it's like, what's the purpose? I mean, yeah, Jimmy G, I mean, I understand with your foot being injured all that, but like, that's awkward. You can easily get professional, like physical therapy for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or remember when the New York Giants had Jared Lawrenson when he was like, um, like 6'4", 285 as a QB? The hefty lefty. Yeah, and of course he died a few years ago. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah, but Jesus, 285. <laughs> that is a big-ass QB. And he was a quarterback, too. That's that's really saying something. Yeah, and he played well for Kentucky when he was there, so. You know something I realized today? I didn't realize that Herbert was six foot six. Who? Justin, Justin Herbert? Herbert. Wow. He's six foot six, dude. That's a big boy. And so, and so, well, Trevor Lawrence, I knew he was tall. Like, I knew yeah, he was Josh Allen player. is up there. He's 6'5". Yeah. Oh, speaking of Josh Allen, there's a rumor going around that he might be on the cover of Matt in 24 in August. 
The oh, Madden curse. Oh God. I really don't, hope that's don't, not don't, the case. Don't take that fucking ten million dollar bonus, Josh. Throw it down the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember last time Tom Brady was on the cover and he blows his ACL out that season? I don't think he blew his ACL. He is he out did, for a year. He did something. Oh, wait. I was, wait a minute. You know what I Remember because Jimmy G had to take over? Yeah, yeah. it was. He blew, yeah, he did. He blew his ACL. Are you? I remember he took... This no. is the beginning of the season. He blew the I, ACL out. Wasn't it Matt Castle, like, the year after they lost to the Giants in the Super Bowl the first time? No, it was Tom Brady. Yeah, I know that, but like, because I remember he blew his ACL, but I don't think it was when Jimmy G was there, though. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because I remember him being on the cover of a Madden game. I think it was Madden 18, and he was on the cover when obviously he was on New England. But it's like, I don't remember if he tore his ACL, I don't think, because I think he injured his leg or something, and then he came back like a few weeks later at the time. Because I think they won the Super Bowl, or they may have went to the Super Bowl at that point when he was there. I don't really remember. Yeah, in either case, curse. though, that There's Madden curse. curse. Yeah. It's a real thing. Yeah, I remember that happened to Patrick Mahomes in the first time he was on the cover, and that was where he had a sustained leg injury when uh, mm-hmm. when he was there. And then he got back a few weeks later, and then he broke the curse by ultimately winning the Super Bowl. And then he was so good, and then he got back on the cover two years later. Yeah. Yeah. Stranger things have happened. But if the rumors are true, I wish him all the best. And I sincerely hope that he doesn't get injured because that's part of the Madden curse. And we don't want that to happen. Yeah, seriously. Seriously. Say uh, a prayer for you. I'll say a prayer for you. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That being said, we'll, let's go on to our last topic because um, – Jacksonville, it is the kicking carousel because oh my god, <laughs> there's some messed up stuff here. First off, they end up bringing in uh, Brandon McManus, <laughs> so that was the first thing. Jesus. But then right. they decide, oh, let's try, let's trade Riley Patterson to Detroit. <laughs> wow, what the fuck is up with that? Like, why? <laughs> what? Well, because you brought in a Super Bowl winning kicker. Congratulations. And McManus is not even as good as he used to be. No. And the sad thing is, he was the last member of that 2015 Broncos Super Bowl team. So every member of that Super Bowl team with Peyton Manning when they took out the Panthers. Yeah, they're all gone. gone. Fuck fuck Peyton Manning. Fuck you, Peyton Manning, piece of dog shit. (laughs) Well, you could also say fuck Von Miller because he's the one that destroyed your hopes and dreams. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I don't I like that Von Miller though. He he's just doing his job. Fuck Peyton Manning. (laughs) <laughs> okay then um oh, no, but, and how we will see his face in canton <laughs> i hope yeah that's actually true we're going to be seeing his uh his precious forehead in the freaking hall of fame yep <laughs> you know what the fuck you know what the most annoying thing i've ever seen what's that is the manning brothers commentating football <laughs> I couldn't Never. even really like get through an entire thing with that. Okay, so like I try, I was streaming a Panthers game one night, and I, I, they, I guess they were playing, whoever I think they were playing the Giants, and the man, the Manning brothers were like commentating this fucking game, and they were making like <laughs> not as bad as Mom as Chill used to be. I'm like, is this gonna go on the whole game, or is this like a fucking two minute segment? Nope, the whole fucking game. I was like. This is like the worst television I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> it's like one of those midday soap operas or something. It's like watching them too, and ser- like seriously, it's like okay, let's let's see who's the biggest cuck of them all, or oh, this person's doing this this week, or this person's doing this last week. The whole game, okay. So you figure like if somebody's dominating the game, you have like them up in the corner in the small screen, you know, and, and in the game. You know, the bigger part of the street. No, nope. it was them sitting on a fucking couch with somebody else, and, and the game was up on a little square in the corner. Like, you, you think we're going to look at what you're wearing, Kate Manning? You, you, you're wearing new slacks today? Oh, we're going to buy those. Like, I, I really want to fucking watch the game, not watch what you're fucking wearing when you're flapping your gums about stupid shit for the next two hours. <laughs> right. I mean, if it makes you feel better, at least you don't have to bleach your eyes at him about that cringy Caesar Sportsbook Chuck Marshall that when they're 
playing charades and then Cooper Manning, who's like the degenerate brother of the three. He's just like, is it the Caesar Sportsbook Company with blah, 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 whatever they advertise. And then you have fucking J.B. Smooth going, yes, you actually did it. And he's like, good job, Cooper. Good job for <laughs> completing an advertisement. Like, congratulations. What do you want, a $5 Subway sandwich? Yeah, really. And the funny thing is, my girlfriend actually, and this is uh, in no way intended to be a diss at Subway or anything, but she goes to Subway like near my house, and apparently Subway had to close early because they ran out of bread. <laughs> that's a shit company. I'm like, how do you run out of bread when that's that what you're making? That is their staple. Their subs. They're exactly. Subs. Well, first thing I had to tell her is why the hell was she going to Subway when she could have gone somewhere even better for her and get a bigger sandwich, but... Although, Tom, I will say, speaking of sandwiches, uh-huh. I've, one place I forgot to take you to in Long Island a couple years ago was a place called My Hero. They make the best Italian sandwiches in ah, Long Island. there we go. That's amazing. It's so yeah. good. But that's debatable. That's debatable. Because everybody has... Uh, Everybody has a different taste, but yeah. I mean, I'll tell you up here in Buffalo. I mean, we have Debellas up here, and that's basically the same exact thing as going to Wegmans, except uh, basically you have more choices. That's true too. But then again, well, Debellas created the Wegmans sub shop inside Wegmans, so there you go. There you go. But uh, no, but there was other there's at least two more rumors that have been spreading around like a wildfire lately, mm-hmm. and that is one is that there's a rumor going around about Aaron Donald requesting a trade out of LA and the rumor is the Buffalo Bills apparently have a trade proposal in place to send Aaron Donald to the Bills for Ed Oliver and a handful of picks including two first round picks in 2024 and 2025 yeah okay there's no way you are not the Rams are not trading the best player they have on their team you're just not going to do it Aaron Donald I feel like Ed Oliver does it Job just as good as him. Like, why would you give up like a whole bunch of picks and yeah, yeah, and, seriously. And and we're talking about a future Hall of Famer here. There is no chance in hell. As much as I love Aaron Donald, I love AD. It's not happening. That dude's a beast. But for Ed Oliver and for the proposal that's supposedly being swirled around, it's not going to happen, guys. So AD to the Bills is not going to happen. And the last rumor that came out is that because of the NFL's supposed June 1st post-release era, teams can now release star players within have, without having to take as much money on their cap. And one of those teams is the Minnesota Vikings. And the Minnesota Vikings, um, <laughs> supposedly Minnesota could release Dalvin Cook tomorrow or whenever. Okay, if they release Dalvin Cook, and especially if the Bills were to pick him up, all I can say is they have instantly upgraded their running back core tenfold. Your running game would go from being mediocre to fucking insane in, in, in about 2.2 seconds. Yeah. I mean, you figure Cook Brothers, you have Naeem Hines, who's a speedy back himself. Yeah. And if you're Dalvin Cook, what do you do? Do you go back home to your home state in Florida? And just live out your days and play with the Dolphins. Oh, fuck the Dolphins. <laughs> yeah, fuck them. Seriously. Um, that or play with your brother in the NFL. Doesn't matter how cold it can be in Buffalo. Go play with your brother. Because a lot of athletes who have siblings in professional sports would love to play with their brothers. Mm-hmm. I mean, Stefan Diggs talks about it all the time with Trayvon Diggs. Whether it's getting it's Trayvon. Somewhere Trayvon. Else. Trayvon ain't going nowhere. Neither is Stefan, so neither one are going anywhere. Right. Um, what was I going to say? The Kelsey brothers, you know, they mm-hmm. have their own podcast, but they would love to play with each other one day. Yep. And then now possibly the Cook brothers being together, that would be like the icing on the cake for Dalvin because he's been linked to the Bills for at least a few handful of months. I want to say he's been linked to the Bills since January. So it's been about six months since Dalvin Cook was linked. I I I talk to him and be like, "What do you want? Whatever you want, we'll give you," because that's not one of those players you're gonna see in the next ten years. I guarantee that. Yeah, hundred percent right. Do what you gotta do to make it happen. Yep. The only problem with getting Dalvin Cook is that he's turning twenty eight August. I mean, that's not it's not the age; it's the money. Because the money, running backs demand, especially from guys like Christian McCaffrey or Saquon Barkley, just as an example. 
those guys are going through the roof. And running backs are now becoming liabilities in terms of the cap. Look at Ezekiel Elliott. That guy has not been signed since free agency. Right. And he wants a shitload of money. He's linked himself to the Bengals. He's linked himself to the Jets. He's linked himself to the Eagles. None of them want him. Good luck, and- Zeke. You ain't getting that money. It's a dude, but in my mind, if any position deserves a lot of money, it's going to be quarterback and running back because those guys take the most bullets in a game. I, I, I don't care what anybody says. That running back's taking fucking hits all night long. All oh, yeah. Long. You're getting destroyed in the pocket, and you're getting destroyed out of the pocket. So I mean, in an extent, I absolutely agree. But here's the issue. Running backs become liability when they go into their 30s. And a lot of them don't pan out. Look at Todd Gurley. That guy was diagnosed with arthritis a few years ago. Yeah. And he doesn't even have a job anymore. Le'Veon yeah. Bell. He got was, paid by the Jets and he just completely went yeah, into a And those yeah. guys were beat up for a while too. Yeah. But there's a difference between those guys. Those guys got greedy. Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley deserve their money. But Christian McCaffrey is on a really good 49ers team. He's getting paid what he's oh, what yeah. he earned with like the Panthers or with the 49ers or whatever you want to call it. Saquon Barkley wants to get paid, and the Giants are not willing to give him what he wants. Because so and I remember when Le'Veon Bell, a year before he went to the Jets, I remember reading an article that said that Le'Veon Bell turned down an offer from the Steelers. That gave him that would have given him twelve point five million dollars for the next four years in Pittsburgh at that time, and he said no. So he leaves and goes to the Jets and takes a cap, you know, cut half of what he was given in Pittsburgh. So and then since then he completely just wiped off from the from the face of the earth. Yeah. That's my only problem with bringing in Dalvin Cook. And I'm not – it's not the production. It's the money. That, that, that's my big gripe with running backs. Yeah, no, and I get, I get it. But at the same time, Dalvin Cook is, like, proven to be, like, like Iron Man. He, he hasn't, like, had any, like, big injuries. You know what I mean? Like, for being a running back, he's a big running back. Yeah. Like, I – feel like he's probably one of the biggest fucking running backs in the league. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not denying his talent. He's a great running back. I mean, he did yeah. great things for the Vikings. But, but, like, what I don't like what I don't like is that when, like, certain people compare certain running backs with other ones, like, when you compare – when someone compares Christian McCaffrey to Delvin Cook, I'm just like, it's not, it's not even the same. Not even yeah. the same because Christian McCaffrey is a whole different running back. Well, he yeah, does. obviously, but he I'm not comparing them in terms of their playing style. No, 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 but I'm just, I'm, running back. I'm just making what the I'm, point. I'm making the point that like a uh, Christian McCaffrey is more of a he's more of an outside runner. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. he's more agile. He's he, he 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 can catch the ball. He can run the ball up the outside to feel a lot easier. Delvin Cook is a fucking wrecking ball. Yeah, you just gotta plow through the middle and take anybody with him. He will run right through the defensive line and take players with him. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? But at the same time, McCaffrey, smaller player, but I've seen that guy drag four players (laughs) on his back as he gets four yards. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, he's strong as fuck too. But like, Dalvin Cook is just. You know, an absolute machine. Just like a battering ram. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, Derrick Henry was like that for years. With oh yeah. Days. And by the way, my background is the Great Smoky Mountains. That's specifically right outside of Gatlinburg, but irrelevant. Uh, but <laughs> no. But Derrick Henry, though, when he's the best player on the Titans, and they're overusing him, and because they have nobody else, and he's getting injured a lot, and that's an issue for a guy like him. When you have King Henry on your team, and that guy's going to be thirty by next you know, April or next March, whatever, that's going to be a guy that nobody will want to pay 15 million to 16 million per year. And yeah. it's not to say I was comparing Dalva Cook to Christian McCaffrey by terms of playing style. I was comparing the two by cap because Christian McCaffrey, like I said, he earns that money. He makes 16 and a half million dollars with San Francisco and he's been thriving on that team. They're ridiculous. And there's no denying that about San Francisco with McCaffrey. But with the Giants, like I said, Saquon Barkley wants $14 million and they're not willing to give it to him, even if he, they have the money to do it. They have it, but they don't want to use that against their cap, if that makes any sense. So for Buffalo, they're kind of cap-strapped right now for the time being. 
So if they want to make this work, they have to make some really tough decisions. And that's by training camp at most with like Naheem Hines or with Latavius Murray, if he's a practice squad guy, I have no idea. So based on all that information, if he goes to the Miami Dolphins, obviously I'll be pissed because I fucking hate Miami. But the thing about the Bills is that he gets to play with his brother. And that's the ultimate leverage that the Bills will have to advertise to Dalvin. And once he becomes officially a free agent, the Bills going to immediately call him and they say, we have your brother and we know you want to play with him. Come to Buffalo. We'll give you a team-friendly deal for one year. And if you work out, we'll give you two years. There you go. There you go. He'll probably take it, dude. Like, I can't see him not taking it because it's like he's already made fucking – he's another player. He's already made millions and millions and millions of dollars, right? He, yeah. I think playing with his brother would be like his ultimate goal, right? Yeah, obviously. I mean, I I would if I'm Dalvin, I'd do it. I mean, compare that to what DeAndre Hopkins is doing. Again, he's making like 22, 36 million now just by being cut from the Cardinals. I mean, they're a shit show, don't get me wrong. And he wants more money and he wants a ring. It's like you want money, but you also want a ring. You can't have both. You have to right. compromise. I think he and nobody nobody picks him up and he just goes off into the sunset and rides his fucking golden horse that he thinks he has up his fucking ass. I don't know about that. I, I think he maybe has like maybe one or two years left in his prime. And once that prime is up, that's when I think he comes expandable. I don't know if the Bills would have entertained the idea at this point as I love DeAndre Hopkins. I think he's a great receiver, but the bill he's demanding too much and the bills can't afford it. Nobody that's anybody, everyone that's interested in him doesn't have the money except for like Houston. Houston has like the most cap out of everybody. And that's why the rumors have been swirling about him possibly going back and being infatuated with CJ Stroud. So I don't understand how Deandre Hopkins has the audacity to ask for more money and then yet take a team friendly deal at the same time, like, how are you going to do that? He's listed Josh Allen. He's listed Patrick Mahomes. He's listed Justin Herbert. He's listed Jalen Hurts. And he even listed Lamar Jackson. No Joe Burrow or anybody like that, for that matter. So it's like, why the fuck are you entertaining five to six teams that you want to play with so badly and yet sweep it under the rug like if nothing happened? And you're just being like, yeah, man, I like the cold. Or, yeah, I, I, I love, you know, Josh Allen. I love Patrick Mahomes. It's like, well, dude, if you love them so much, shut the hell up, get your contract, make it a team-friendly deal, play on the team for one year, go get your ring, and be done with it. Stop teasing everybody about this. It's getting ridiculous. OBJ did this shit. Very true. And, and on that note, uh, what we'll do is I'm just going to say one quick thing and then we'll wrap up here. But uh, I just want to give a shout out to our friend Sophia, who we had earlier on the um, on the show during the earlier earlier part of the season. Uh, she just wrapped up her treatment. Things are going well, looking good. So so glad to hear that you are doing a lot better. And sorry you had to sit through that Celtics uh, blowing game seven. <laughs> but <laughs> but that being said, glad to hear you're doing a lot better, though. We all love you. And, you know, we'll see you soon. And you're getting your Sabres box this weekend. So. The courtesy of all of us. So, that being said, we'll go ahead and we'll wrap up for another week. So, it's kind of interesting. We don't have that many more shows left this season. We're almost down to the end. So, July 5th is the last one for the season. Yeah. So, July 5th, we'll wrap up. And then, of course, afterwards, uh, we'll do our um, top five moments of the season, which Battle Vindaloo is going to be one of them. I already know that. Oh, yeah. Where your face was purple after you ate that stuff <laughs> and then and then pretty much from there to uh, our last show of the season on july 5th we're gonna have our first ever uh buffalo after dark fan hall of famer induction so what's that <laughs> uh, basically we're gonna induct our first ever super fan so so we're gonna we do that and I'm, and I'm getting, we have uh, a super fan Wait, wait. There's a there's a few of them. There's a few of them. I'm not gonna name them, but I sure hell ain't gonna be trainer, and it sure as hell is not hatch right now either. Don't say if you put trainers a number one no. super fan, I'm gonna no. kill that. No, hell no, no. It's not trainer. We know who it is, but <laughs> right? But no, we'll have them on the last show of the season too. So, so with that being said, what we'll do, we'll wrap up. 
And of course, if you're in Buffalo, enjoy the hotter than hell weather because it's still about 80 something out. So <laughs> enjoy that. But that being said, thanks for joining us as usual. We appreciate it. In the meantime, take care of yourselves and each other. We'll see you next time around. Thanks. Later.